I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye a cotton linen blend. Cotton is a yarn base that is 70% cotton, 30% linen, and it does, I think, have a nice drape to it. Linen tends to be slightly rougher than cotton, uh, but I think maybe it adds, I don't know what it does that it adds to the fiber, to be honest, but I'm excited to dye this today. I've dyed this base a couple times in the past, but I don't think I've ever dyed it as the star of its own video like I'm planning to do right now. I don't know if it'll show up, but we do have a little bit of heathering in the fiber. Maybe you can see it a little bit from, the heathering comes from the blend of the fibers that we have in here. But anyway, I'm gonna go soak this at least overnight uh, so it'll be nice and saturated when we're ready to dye it. And this first pre-soak will be in just plain tap water. Our video today is gonna go in a slightly different direction from what I had originally planned. You might be able to tell that my voice just sounds completely off. <laughs> I don't sound like myself. And I want to try to create a rainbow kind of colorway on this cotton linen blend. And I wanna do that with the dry fiber reactive dye powders. But I don't think that I will be able to talk at all while I'm wearing my respirator mask. So editing Rebecca is gonna come and give some commentary <laughs> after I finish the dyeing process. But we'll show you all the colors and everything like normal. The other thing I want to point out is that I potentially have messed this yarn up and ruined it because it has been sitting in that soda ash pre-soak for a week, maybe a little over a week, but about a week. And so a lot longer than I originally intended. Uh, and so that isn't something I really recommend doing, but it is what it is. And I wanna share that this happened because we'll learn, right? If I have completely destroyed the yarn, we'll learn that this had something to do with it. Oh my gosh. The good news with regards to this cold is that the voice is the biggest symptom. Uh, and so, phew, I mean, that's not so bad at least. But I'm gonna show you the yarn and the dyes. And yeah, let's dye, let's dye this cellulose fiber. Our water is this really pretty, <laughs> gross looking Aztec gold color. <laughs> um, but it was, it did have some color in it from the original pre-soak, from some of the yarns, uh, the most recent Dye Pop PS video, which may or may not be publicly available yet, uh, did use the same pre-soak. I haven't purchased a poster to cut out fiber reactive swatches onto these jars like I've done with my acid dyes. The three colors I'm going to use for our rainbow are fuchsia red, lemon yellow, and turquoise. Now I know that the turquoise is a color that is much more likely to bleed uh, and so therefore anything that has that turquoise in it always has like a little asterisk with a T, but we're going to use it and see what we can create. Now, the one thing I have not done yet is any kind of official color mixing with these colors, but I'm planning on approximating the rough kinds of ratios when I'm layering the colors onto the yarn based on my experience with acid dyes in a similar fuchsia, cyan, magenta kind of color mixing process. But now I'm gonna go put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, safety glasses, and gloves. We're gonna use my catering steam pan for the hand painting, even though I'm planning on steam setting the colorway in the end. Uh, and we definitely have some evidence of some of the other fiber reactive dyes that I've used recently. I'm hitting Rebecca here, and let's see if I can figure out what I did. I am arranging the yarn, removing most of the liquid from the pre-soak into my catering steam pan. And this is a steam pan that I had already stained <laughs> with fiber reactive dyes. So that little bit of pink you see on the bottom, I haven't been able to get that to budge at all. And I debated if I wanted to dye this rainbow in like a circle uh, where I had one repeat around the length of the yarn or if I wanted it to be a little bit doubled around and back. And so I went with the circle with the ends next to each other so that way I could layer our fuchsia red dye uh, for the purple at one end and the reddish pink and orange at the other. Now, when it comes to the mixing, I know at least when it comes to acid dyes that a good orange is 
uh, at least three parts yellow to one part pink. And honestly, it could be more like eight or nine parts yellow to one or two parts pink. Uh, you really want a lot more yellow than pink. And so that's what I tried to set up here. Similarly, a purple tends to be a little bit more pink than blue, at least when it comes to acid dyes. Now, when I was layering on the yellow, I wanted to create a larger yellow section than I thought I might need because I wanted to not lose the yellow as we move colors through. And I could see some liquid leaking out of the yarn, so I placed the paper towel in the middle so that way if the colors start to spread, they'll sort of be absorbed by the paper towel instead of the yellow traveling onto our purple and making something more muted but it does seem like things might be muted because of the color of the linen in that cotton blend, but that is separate. Now, in the Dye Pop PS video that I mentioned briefly, I used this pink and yellow together and did it end up with a ton of oranges, actually. And so, at the time, I knew that I was gonna wanna layer more pink. It does seem like this fuchsia red strikes to the yarn much faster than uh, the turquoise, which we know is a bleeder, and the yellow. And so that's something that is interesting for the future. Now, when it came to blending the colors, which I'm doing just by squeezing and massaging the dye powders in with my fingers, with my gloved fingertips, I found most of the colors to be relatively easy to mix. The one exception was the purple. The fuchsia red, even though it is pretty much a pink color, it did seem to be a little bit too red, which I knew from experience when you mix red and blue, you get a much deeper purple. If you mix a cyan and a magenta, you get a more vibrant, bright purple. So I was unsure with how well this purple was blending in. It felt like it was gonna be very pink and that the tone was different. So I did spend some time playing around with this. I think in the end, we'll end up with something really, really great, but, yeah, I guess I just needed to <laughs> point that out. But little by little, I added on more dye powder and I was unsure about how much to do. I mean, I don't have as much experience with fiber reactive dyes as I have with acid dyes. And so I'm still learning where, what the color looks like, what, what that might translate to for the finished dry yarn. Because unlike acid dyes, you're never going to absorb all of the fiber reactive dyes when you have soda ash on your yarn. And here we are flipping our Kotlin yarn over. We got reasonable penetration of colors to the other side. And yeah, just wiping things down a little bit before um, I go and start adding more color, going back in with the yellow again. But overall, I was feeling pretty optimistic with, for how this was going and that I would be achieving the colors that I wanted. The thing that started to give me pause was I didn't know what I was gonna to do to heat set this. So with fiber reactive dyes, soda ash, and cotton, you have a few choices. I could wrap this up, maybe even just in the pan, uh, wrap it up so the water doesn't evaporate and let it sit for a couple of days. That is absolutely a choice. Or if I wanted to get the results sooner, I could steam set it. But the question is, how am I gonna get this into a steamer basket where we know it's dripping a little bit without the areas touching each other? Because I don't want to transfer some of that blue onto the orange. And so I just didn't know the best way to go about that. And so in my brain, as I'm dyeing this yarn, and while well, I was watching Game of Thrones, <laughs> but while I was doing that, my brain is going, how am I gonna heat this? How am I gonna heat this? And oh, here the purples, blue, and green look a lot more blended than it did on the first side. I am really enjoying applying the dye powder here versus uh, using a liquid dye because it is allowing me to increase the total amount of dye that I have on each section. Whereas if I was using liquids, at some point the yarn would become really saturated and it would be harder for me to add more physical pigment onto the yarn. So this is working really, really well. <laughs> I mean, at this stage, I know how the yarn turned out, but at the time, you know, I was a bit worried about that purple, but otherwise I was pretty happy for my first 
fiber reactive dye rainbow. Now that the yarn is dyed, I have to consider how we're gonna heat set it. The thing with fiber reactive dyes is that you don't necessarily need heat. You can let the yarn sit for 24, 48, 72 hours, and the dyes will strike over time. But you can also steam set it and then let it cool and you'll be able to wash it a lot sooner. So you do have some choices there. And I'm a little bit unsure or undecided really what makes the most sense um, and what works the best because I don't have as much experience with the fiber reactive dyes. But I'm going to go set up the steamer basket off camera because I know then I'll be able to finish the yarn today and this poor yarn has been soaking for so long. I realized that I do want to use my smaller steamer basket because this one is a little bit stained also from the last time I used fiber reactive dyes. So I think while the pot hit heats up, I'm going to let everything sit right here and then uh, we'll get some plastic wrap and start wrapping things up. All right, let's see how we're going to wrap this. Um, I want to start with our yellow section and I know that there is now plastic wrap and dye on the outside of the plastic wrap as well and I also know that the colors are going to move uh, throughout this whole process but the goal is to try to avoid uh, as much as I can transfer of colors from one section to another as best we can. So like if the pink ends up being open, that's not a problem. I just don't want to get all of that onto the yellow. And so usually, I'm doing this in a really odd way, um, but usually it would probably behoove me um, to set up the plastic wrap first and lay the yarn on top of it. But the reason why I didn't do that this time is because I thought I might want to move things around more. And I didn't want to be limited uh, to where the plastic wrap was originally placed. Let's see, I'm trying, oh dear. As I do this, and I know some more green is going to go on that yellow, but I'm trying to just overlap it as best I can. Um, and then the pink isn't going to be well wrapped, but that's okay. All right. We've done, I think, the best we can do. And the other thing that I want to make sure of as we put this into our steamer basket, oh dear, I got to rearrange this a little bit. Doing the best we can. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to make sure is that the steamer basket isn't going to drip. But I think we're in no danger of that. But I'm going to go quickly put this on the stove. And of course, as soon as I said that, it did drip. But I'm now going to go ahead and steam set this for an hour. I want to give this time. I want to let as much of this color strike as possible. Now, fiber reactive dyes with soda ash will react with water and this is why there's a lot of rinsing in the end because you have dye molecules that can no longer bind to the fiber uh, that just need to be rinsed away. And since cotton is so absorbent that can make it hard to get that out. But anyway, uh, we will be back in about an hour. It's also important for me to note that while the colors feel super saturated here and now, uh, things don't always look the same with fiber reactive dyes once you rinse that excess dye out. Uh, sometimes the color and the hues can shift. So if I wanted to mix a green uh, out of these fiber reactive dyes, the best thing to probably do would be to do some color mixing, see the greens, but then see what the finished color looks like, not what the wet dye color looks like. So that's something I need to remind myself. It's been an hour, so I'm now going to turn off the heat. But I'm actually going to leave the yarn in here. I'm going to leave the lid on, and I'm going to let things cool. Maybe not completely, but until I can comfortably handle it. Uh, because we may as well. A little more heat won't hurt our yarn. 
things are nice and wet in there, so we're not in any danger of scorching anything. Shoot, I thought I was recording. I just said that there, it's time to remove um, the yarn from the pot. It had been cooling for a couple of hours, and I just popped it in. You can see I'm still removing this plastic wrap, not super elegantly. Hopefully, we don't get back staining. I don't have any soap in the water. Oh dear. Okay, well, we're gonna go through this way. All right, and with the help of squeezing this out, turning this water on, then using a paper towel to catch any drips this time. Let's throw this away. And we're gonna wash our fiber, taking extra care over the yellow. And interesting that the average color is green. But I don't know what editing Rebecca will say over the time lapse. It did seem to me that some of those pinks were striking almost right away, which was really, really cool. All right, I'm gonna add some dish soap. And oh my goodness. Okay, no, we're seeing more color come out, including some pinks. But it is primarily yellow. Uh, the yellow dye is a little bit chunkier. So it's possible it didn't dissolve as well. But the yarn doesn't feel ruined. Some of these colors do feel a little bit muddy. Like some of those oranges, like maybe they could be brighter. Um, the rainbow is feeling rather muted at the moment. But let's keep washing. And before I go into a little time lapse, I didn't want to show some of the staining we have in here. We do have some color transfer into our dye bath and I'm curious yeah we do have some blue and yellow staining in the steamer basket but I'll take care of that later for now we're focusing on our yarn which okay this is weird this is like I was gonna go into a time lapse but this is like the least amount of bleeding I've ever had <laughs> dyeing cellulose yarn at least it feels that way uh, maybe a really, really absurdly long soda ass soak. What? I am perplexed. All right. I'm going to put this space enough and we're going to let it soak for a little bit and then come back and look. Because, I mean, what? <laughs> Yeah, so we're gonna let things soak because if there's powders we that weren't dissolved before, we want them to dissolve now. What? It's been five or six minutes. Okay, we are getting more color coming out. I mean, this, I, I, I don't know, I was like so nervous and surprised. I mean, this is the thing that's gonna happen. When you have a tie-dye t-shirt, or yarn, um, it's gonna bleed the first few washes. You can do your best to rinse it clear. Um, and so at this stage, even with some bleeding, it's not gonna crock, it shouldn't come off on my hands. But I would still wash anything um, hand-dyed that is cotton on its own for the first few washes. Um, because I haven't tried to dye yarn specifically with the backwash. And in theory, because I think I mentioned that fiber reactive dyes react uh, with the water molecules, and so then they stop being able to work. And so, in theory, what we're rinsing out is all of the dye that won't bind to things, but that doesn't mean it can't stain. So, anyway, I'm going to keep washing this off camera, then I'll put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can see the finished yarn. This is a beautiful, beautiful yarn. We have a nice big section of yellow that remained. I am super happy about that. And the purple that we ended up with does, well, it's broken because of the way we layered the colors, but it does seem to fit next to the blue and feel different from that pink. And so I'm happy with how that turned out. The thing that I wish is that the colors were more saturated. This is, again, a beautiful rainbow, and it's not that muted, 
but the colors definitely could be louder and they could be more vibrant. And I think I'm just scared because if I go back and look at a screenshot of the yarn as I was painting it, I have a feeling it's going to look very vibrant and saturated there. But I'm still not used when it comes to fiber reactive dyes and plant-based fibers. I'm not used to knowing how much dye to add to get the color I want. Because when it comes to acid dyes on wool yarn, things always look darker when they're wet. And the same is absolutely true for cotton. But when this kind of technique with cotton yarn and fiber reactive dyes, the colors are always going to be way, way more saturated before you rinse them out. Like, no question. And because there's going to be dye that you rinse out. And so I'm both afraid of adding way too much dye, and that's probably the thing that's most holding me back. I'm afraid of having way too much dye, and also I'm stopping at a level where I'm happy with the colors I see based on my experience dyeing wool. And so those are the things that I'm going to need to play off of going forward. Now, this is a cotton linen blend that we have here. And the yarn did not start off as a pure white. Uh, and so it's possible that this blend with linen also maybe wouldn't end up as bright and saturated as one could possibly go if we were to compare it to a bleached cotton that then I were gonna dye. So I don't know if the fiber content is working against like me getting something bright, but we did mix a gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow here. And well, it's funny, I guess orange needs a little bit more work, but we do have pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So we did hit all of those notes. And just dealing with three, I don't know if they're all technically primaries, but starting with a fuchsia, a yellow, and a turquoise, we hit all of these colors. And so that's great. Because when trying to mix a rainbow with dye more synthetic, that's another situation where the color that you see on the yarn isn't necessarily going to be the same as the final color you end up with. So you might try to mix proportions that look great as a liquid and then that not be what the final color is because of possibly the different rates and the way the different colors develop on the fiber. And so I'm really, really happy by this. And honestly, the, the blue feels bright. The green could be more punchy. The yellow could have a little more punch. And then I could have added more pink. Uh, I think I was also afraid of doing too much pink to yellow here. But I should just go ahead and do some color mixing with these colors and play around to get a better feel of how much dye to use. But if I had dyed a tie-dye t-shirt with this amount of dye and ended up with colors like this, I would be thrilled. I'd be thrilled. Now as for the texture, it feels fine. I was so worried that I had somehow damaged the yarn by leaving it in that soda ash soak for as long as I did, but I don't think it's damaged. And so that's great. <laughs> it was a little hard to decide how to twist this up, but I decided to hold uh, the yarn at one of the yellows. And so that way you can get a feel that there is going to be some like color progression throughout the yarn. Uh, I'm so proud of this. I just need to push myself to dye cottons more. Even though, I mean, the reason why I don't is because for all I love tie dyeing and stuff, I don't love washing cotton yarn and that's the thing that keeps me from dyeing it more. But anyway, if you have any tips for me, please let me know down in the comments below. You know, the yellow is not as like yellow as I've had with this color in the past and so that could be part of that linen blend showing through now that I think about it more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I always post videos at least twice a week and even all summer. There are times when I might be a little less active down in the comments section but I try to work ahead so I still have videos up when I'm taking a little bit of a keyboard break uh, for summer break myself. And there is one way you can help force me to dye some more plant-based fiber videos. 
uh, viewers can become a lab partner and get shout outs in a video. And as lab partner, you get to pick the yarn base <laughs> that you would like to see me dye uh, in that video. And so you can pick cotton and that will, uh, that's one way to force me to do more cotton dyeing content. <laughs> If I don't have a cotton option in the lab partner listing, go ahead and send me a message on Etsy and I can look through and see what cotton yarn bases I have in my collection already or what I might be able to order special for the video. And I do have some more cotton videos for lab partners coming up later this year. So you know that in 2023, there's gonna be some more. Thank you so much for watching.